Western Development Museum was founded in the 1940s and our mandate of the Western Development Museum is to collect or purchase or acquire by whatever means um, items relating to the history of Saskatchewan. So whether it's tractors or trucks or tools and equipment or clothing, um, whatever it relates to the heritage of our province. Most people are aware that we have four locations of the museum in Yorkton, Moose Jaw, North Battleford and Saskatoon. But few people realize that we also have a fifth facility and that's the Curatorial Centre. The Curatorial Centre includes what you see behind me. This is a portion, a small portion of our storage. It's a centralized storage for all four branches of the Western Development Museum. And at any given time, probably about a third at least of our artifacts are in storage. And we have about 88,000 artifacts in total uh, for the whole system. Our Winning the Prairie Gamble exhibit, the last few years we rotated out about at least 1,500 artifacts that were previously in storage here at the Curatorial Centre have been moved out onto exhibit and other ones come back to storage. So we try and make sure that artifacts that uh, are, are restored or, or you know, ready to go are, are seen by the public. The other part of this building includes our administration uh, building, which um, we have all of our curatorial staff. So that includes our collections department in conservation. That includes our education programming department. And that includes our research and our library. That includes our marketing department. That includes fundraiser. Our fundraiser works out of this building. And our exhibits department, the you know, very important function that we perform here at the Curatorial Centre. All the exhibits that people visit at the, all four of our locations are built here and then moved out into the uh, museums. There's a never-ending stream of pretty interesting stuff coming into the collection, I think. Part of our mandate is to collect and preserve artifacts relating to Saskatchewan's history, and Saskatchewan's history isn't all old. Saskatchewan's history is yesterday. So we are collecting items that are representative of living in the province as far back as the 1800s. We have a quilt in the collection, who, which was made by a woman in Haywarden, Saskatchewan. And times were tough in the early days. And what she did for a batting for her quilt was to collect pieces of wool that were caught on the barbed wire fence between her yard and the neighbor's yard. The neighbors had sheep. Sheep would run into the fence. Little pieces of wool would get caught on the barbed wire, and she collected those to stuff her quilt. That's an example, I think, of the resourcefulness of Saskatchewan people. So I'm standing here in our storage area, which includes a permanent wave machine, which used to attach to women's hair, and then it would be an electric switch that would turn it on and perm their hair. And it uh, seems like a torture device today, but uh, at any rate, it's uh, kind of an interesting looking contraption. When people want to donate something to the museum, they normally phone our office and they describe what they would like to give. Uh, normally, they provide a little bit of information, but what's important to us is the story. What does this artifact tell about the people who used it? What does this artifact tell about Saskatchewan? What does it tell about living in Saskatchewan? What we normally do is collect as much information as we can. Then the process is to bring the, all the offers of that particular week to the Acquisitions Committee and we determine whether or not it's an artifact that we would like to accept. And the criteria used are its condition, how many we have, and the story whether or not we'll accept it. When it's accepted then we take delivery of it, the donor is asked to sign a donation form which transfers unrestricted ownership then to the museum. From there the artifact is catalogued and photographed and either put into storage until we need it for an exhibit or it goes to an exhibit. Our other mandate is to inspire people's interest in our history through our exhibits and through our education programming. We 
have literally thousands and thousands of artifacts in our collection. And as time goes on and exhibits are developed, those artifacts make their way through the, the system and could find themselves displayed on a, a set like this or in a display like this. And before we do anything, we do a lot of research to make sure that the stories that we are telling are the stories uh, that are accurate and portray things as, as best we can. You can get into the endless argument about, well, whose history are you interpreting? And uh, that can go on forever, but we are trying to pro portray a general view or a general perception of what the history of Saskatchewan was. The library supports the reference or research activities of the museum, so we answer inquiries from staff members and from volunteers, identifying objects, dating them, um, looking through local histories, trying to get information on the people who may have owned the item, for example. Our book collection reflects the interests of the museum, so we have books on dolls, we have books on cars, we have books on farm machinery. We have books on Saskatchewan history, we have a lot of local histories, we have books on Canadian history. Just about any subject you can think of that relates to Saskatchewan, we'd have some kind of material on it. Marshall Wells was a seller of hardware products and they were a wholesaler out of Winnipeg, so they supplied a lot of the small hardware stores in, Sask or in Saskatchewan and also the bigger hardware stores in cities like Regina and Saskatoon. And this is a, a page of paint colors. So this is exterior and interior sample shades from 1913 for Marshall Wells. So just about anything you can imagine that a hardware store might carry. So any kind of hardware store you can think of and what they carry today, they carried back then. Yeah, we have wiring diagrams, for example, on cars, early cars, cars from the teens, cars from the 20s. So if you're restoring one of those, you can come in here and look at the wiring diagram, make a copy of it, and then go off and restore it. You used to be able to buy uh, a complete house, all the materials to build a complete house from companies like Aladdin or Eaton's in the 1910s and 1920s. We have some of those catalogs. This was Canadian Aladdin out of Toronto. They'd sell you the plans, and they'd sell you the blueprint. Yeah, so, and then they'd sell you all the materials you needed, the lumber, uh, the shingles, all the nails, and give you instructions on how to put it together. So you hire a carpenter or you do it yourself and uh, this was available all across the country. Very common in the West because there was a demand before the first war for housing because lots of people were coming into the country. And so this is how they cut the lumber. They tried to cut the lumber as, as uh, well as they could so they didn't waste any of it, or wasted very little of it. And these are the actual plans. There's a picture or a sketch of the actual house and there's the floor plan of the first floor, the second floor, or the third floor, if there was uh, three floors. And then you have the description of the house. Uh, we have early fashion catalogs, like uh, specialty fashion companies for uh, men and women from the teens, the 20s, um, 40s, and 50s, for example. As far as the clothing goes, it represents um, everyday life and more formal occasions in times past. Mostly people save their good clothes. They don't think of offering us their overalls or their house dresses. They offer the party gowns, perhaps, like this velvet dress, and I believe this one was worn by Violet McNaughton in the 30s. Violet McNaughton was an uh, activist and a farm woman, leader of the Women Grain Growers Association in Saskatchewan, a very important person in the development of um, better life for farm women. She was editor of the Western Producer for 25 years and she had a huge influence on people in the, in, in the province. So to have something of hers is really important because it helps us to tell Violet's story. Depending on what sort of story it's trying to tell, um, it'll find a different application. It might just be in a static display. It might be in a display where uh, the visitors put into a more immersive experience where they can actually interact with it. Sometimes, too, what we'll do is we'll actually um, have what we call extension artifacts that people can actually touch, use, and experience in the, in the manner that it was originally designed for. 
For example, our most recent launch was the cobalt bomb display, where we um, actually have a, a machine that was used to treat cancer patients. The technology and the development of that particular piece of machinery led to the creation of a display around it to tell the story of innovative Saskatchewan research, um, innovative cancer treating technologies, all sorts of stories sprung from that one particular artifact. In a setting like this, we've got a, a, a whole story that we can tell, but it's not necessarily around one specific artifact. It's a story that needs to be told. People often think of the Western Development Museum as a tractor museum or an agriculture museum, and we are that, and that's a big part of our tradition, but we're so much more than that. We collect all, all areas, all fields all, all of Saskatchewan, including healthcare innovation, including transportation innovation, including uh, oil and gas and potash artifacts. So um, one of the things we, we really pride ourselves in doing here at the museum is showcasing innovation in Saskatchewan, and it, there are many, many examples of that here at the WD. One thing people think about when they think about the museum is they think about ancient artifacts or older artifacts, but things that we use today are actually becoming artifacts as well. So uh, the old artifacts that we have are, are truly valued as well, but as time goes on, uh, an item from the 1950s, 1960s becomes an artifact and all of a sudden becomes a treasure that could be added to our collection and used in future displays, models, uh, immersive uh, environments, things like that. At the Western Development Museum we have a number of uh, partnerships that we have, right, whether it be in, with educational institutions such as the university or the school boards as well. We have a number, a number of business partners or sponsors who act as sponsors for some of our exhibits. And, um, and, and then just some smaller businesses that have helped us out in developing uh, various exhibits at the Western Development Museum. So we're very grateful for the partnerships that we have out there in the community. By all means, get connected with the Western Development Museum, and thank you.